Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and it looks like science finally found a way to answer the question of what came first, the chicken or the egg? And today you might find out the real answer. And here we're not just talking about some kind of a philosophical answer, or an answer based on some kind of an assumption, no, not at all. Here we're going to be talking about an actual organism that seems to be about 1 billion years old that possibly explains how eggs came to be. Or at least explains how multicellular life eventually created the idea of embryos. And so let's talk about this in a little bit more detail, but I guess let's start with some definitions. And I guess first let's start with eggs. Eggs can be defined as a type of a vessel that's usually grown by an animal in order to be then fertilized and in order to then create an embryo. Here's actually a really cool image, basically showing us a really large variety of different types of eggs. Here we see things from birds, reptiles, and even butterflies and moths. And some of them have really bizarre shapes. And so within these eggs, we expect a development of an embryo that's eventually going to turn into an animal fetus, that's then supposed to survive on its own. And we know that a lot of different animals usually rely on eggs. For example, different types of arthropods, different types of mollusks, and even quite a lot of vertebrates, except for mammals. Suggesting that this is an extremely successful reproductive strategy. And in case you're wondering, the largest egg in the world is not from an ostrich, it's actually from a whale shark. These are usually at least 30 centimeters or 12 inches in length, but usually stay inside the shark's body with the baby hatching inside the mother. But because this is such a widespread strategy, and because so many different animals seem to use eggs, naturally the question is, so how exactly did this form? And more importantly, did this process start before animal formation, or did animals already exist and the eggs somehow developed later? So literally, chicken or the egg? Which one is first? And to try to answer this question, first we have to understand what these eggs are basically for. Once the egg is fertilized, it starts the process of cell division, which is normally called cleavage, and during this process a lot of division takes place without an actual growth of an organism and instead resulting in what's known as a blastula, a collection of cells with a large hollow in the middle that pretty much all animals seem to go through. And so because all eggs seem to go through this process, this is actually something that unites them and something we can use to then try to figure out where all of this started. And even though this is something that we expect from basically multicellular organisms, turns out this process of blastulation also appears in at least one unicellular organism as well. And today we're going to be discussing one such organism that's actually kind of unusual, somewhat unique, and provides us with somewhat important answers. And so, introducing... Chromosphera perkinsi, a somewhat strange microbe that existed on Earth for at least a billion years that actually seems to do something similar. But first, so what exactly is this? Well, this particular species is part of what's known as Ichthyosporia. Here's actually another organism that's been previously found in the Arctic. And Ichthyosporia are a very small group of single-cell eukaryotic organisms that pretty much all seem to be parasites of fish although sometimes other animals as well. And so most of these unicellular organisms are usually parasites. But turns out that not this one. For some reason, Chromosphera perkinsi is not a parasite and prefers to live in the oceans buried in the ground, surviving on all sorts of stuff that's usually on the ocean floor. But because this is a eukaryote and not a prokaryote, this is not a bacteria. Technically you would call this a protist, and so it's actually not that different from our cells possessing quite a lot of complexity. And though in terms of the actual lifestyle, it's not really that different from other bacteria, what makes it unique is how it reproduces. For some reason, during reproduction, it actually assumes a very similar shape to an animal embryo. In other words, once it actually starts its reproduction process, instead of just dividing into two cells, here it possesses an unusual behavior where as it divides, the cells start to coordinate, forming a larger cluster, which eventually forms a shape extremely similar to a typical blastula. But here it starts to act as a kind of a colony. As a matter of fact, there are at least two distinct cell types here, with this very strange union basically existing for the majority of the life cycle for this strange cell. But once they're done, they separate into individual cells, moving to a new area and restarting the cycle again. And so in essence here, 
they go through a very bizarre cycle that seems to always end in a multicellular colony that resembles something that we usually find in a typical egg. And once this blastula stage is almost complete, it's basically able to create two separate cells, one that's moving and one that's not. And as you can imagine, the similarities with what happens inside more complex animals are just way too bizarre. The entire development process, and even the fact that the cells differentiate into two different types, basically suggests that this development must have existed for at least billion years. But much more importantly, suggests that it existed hundreds of millions of years before the formation of the first animal. Or basically, egg was definitely first. Chickens came way, way after. Or at least, this suggests that the genetics that usually result in the production of egg-like structures existed for a very, very long time. Way before the production of first embryos and way before the first animal came to be. But here there's maybe one side note. With a side note being that this is just a bizarre organism for a typical ichthyosporian parasite. It's the only one that forms these unusual colonies and it's also the only one that's free-living. And so here, one explanation is that maybe this is actually some kind of a direct ancestor or some kind of a sibling to various types of modern complex animal life. But on the other hand, maybe this is just basically a mutant. An unusual mutant that acquired a new trait through the process of convergent evolution. So for example, just like we know that wings evolved many, many times in the history of animals, and so did eyes and brains, here, maybe this is actually something similar. Maybe these unusual blastule-like formations are just a result of convergent evolution because for some reason this colony clustering was somehow advantageous both for Chromosphera perkinsii and for modern animal life. And since other similar organisms don't really contain this feature, right now it's not entirely clear if this is indeed a genetic connection or just a type of a convergent evolution. But because the division inside these cells is so similar to what happens inside eggs and inside more complex life, and also because this organism seems to have existed on Earth for at least a billion years, at least for now, this definitely suggests that life potentially developed a way to produce eggs way, way before eggs themselves. And once the first egg appeared, because this was such a successful process, it eventually spread across different types of life, resulting in a diversity of different egg-bearing animals. And because this particular cell is not really an animal, but is still kind of related to us to some extent, studying this in more detail will eventually answer all of these questions, including the questions on the origins of complex life. And so right now, we cannot rule out some kind of a common ancestor, but we also cannot rule out convergent evolution. But we'll probably have some more answers once someone conducts a genetic analysis, and once we find out if the genes inside us and inside egg-bearing animals are similar to what we find here. Either way, right now this organism presents us with a very interesting example where the temporal and spatial cell differentiation possibly started and possibly led to the emergence of complex animal life. Super cool discovery, super interesting study, but we'll definitely come back and talk more about this once there are some additional discoveries. On that note, check out some of the previous very similar videos on a very similar topic in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.